Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel where we talk about real crimes and real people. Please give this video many likes, I really appreciate it. And please leave a comment down below. Today, I bring you the story of Nevea Gallegos, a three-year-old girl who was failed by her mother and was killed. This is a story of bad parenting, bad choices and a bad man. What happened to Nevea? Want to know Nevea's story? Let's get started. Not everyone should be a parent, especially those who choose their bows over their child's life. Sometimes choosing a side means the difference between life or death. And for little Nevea, her mother's bad choices led to Nevea's death. At the ends of a bad man, her mother just didn't want it to let go of. Nevea Gallegos was born on August 1st, 2004 and lived in Denver, Colorado. Her mother was Miriam Gallegos and Miriam, well, let's just say struggled with her parenting skills. Nevea's father is unknown. Up until Nevea's tragic death, Nevea lived and was taken care by her maternal grandmother, Janet. And Miriam, well, she would sometimes spend time with Nevea. Janet Gallego stated Nevea was a healthy child. She had no medical problems. She would have her regular shots and checkups. Janet wanted to give a safe upbringing to Nevea, but in 2006, something happened. Nevea was taken to the hospital because she had vaginal bleeding. It seemed she had something inserted in her, but it was inconclusive as to what it was. Initially, suspicions fell onto Angel Montoya, Miriam's boyfriend. As a result of this incident, Nevea was placed with Janet. Miriam only had supervised visitations. Miriam was not allowed to live in the same house as Nevea, and there couldn't be any contact whatsoever with Angel Montoya. Due to the lack of evidence and lack of cooperation from Miriam, Angel was never arrested. Later, examination stated the injury could have happened during diapering. Miriam was able to return home, Janet's house. Nevea was placed back with Miriam, and Miriam had to report if she had any contact with Angel. Let's be honest, his name isn't Angel, it's Angel. So let's keep going. And Miriam promised Janet she would never ever leave Nevea with Angel again. But Miriam lied. Miriam was a very young girl when she had Nevea. In 2007, Miriam was only 20 years old. Miriam worked at a sports authority board store. She had history with the Department of Denver Human Services regarding her parenting skills and her as a juvenile. She had issues with drugs in 2006. She was convicted on weed charges. Miriam lived with her 23-year-old boyfriend, Angel Montoya, at an apartment in the city, county of Denver, Colorado. And this relationship only brought tragedy. It brought death. But who was Angel Montoya? Who was this man Miriam didn't let go of? Angel Ray Montoya was born on January 19th, 1985. Angel had his issues with the law throughout the years. He, like Miriam, had history with the Department of Denver Human Services as a juvenile. He was charged with the physical abuse of his ex-girlfriend's five-year-old disabled child and was convicted of assault with a deadly weapon and had a restraining order issued. Angel was also charged with indecent exposure to a minor. In 2003, he failed to register as a sex offender and was charged with a misdemeanor and pled guilty. In 2005, Angel was charged with false imprisonment and child abuse. He pled guilty to one count of misdemeanor, child abuse, and was sentenced to 270 days in jail, which were suspended and 18 months of supervised probation. Officials were concerned Angel lived with his young niece and nephew at his mother's house, but they didn't follow through with their concerns. It seemed officials might have had some suspicions on Angel. Angel was most likely a menace to children and his wrongdoings would escalate. 
which it did. On July 2006, Angel was investigated for assaulting Nevea. However, there was no evidence and Miriam didn't cooperate. It was obvious Miriam was more concerned on keeping Angel happy and close to her than keeping Nevea safe and away from a possible predator. Miriam and Angel's relationship wasn't of a bed of roses. Neighbors stated the two of them often yelled at each other in the streets. What came next was nothing but tragic and devastating. On September 18, 2007, Miriam picked up Nevea from Janet's house and stated she was going to spend some time with Nevea because she didn't have work. Janet and her sister Kathy stated when Nevea left the house, Nevea didn't have any bruising on her body, limbs, or head. Little they knew that was the last time they would ever see Nevea alive. On September 21st, Miriam checked on Nevea. She asked Angel, who wasn't supposed to be close to Nevea or be in the same place as Nevea, to bathe Nevea. The sex offender and predator in the making had access to his favorite type of prey, a child. And then Miriam left Nevea with Angel. Later that day, Miriam asked a woman to call the police because Nevea had been kidnapped. Miriam told the police she was walking Nevea to the Denver Health Medical Center when an older model white for four door car pulled and the man in the passenger seat grabbed Nevea. He put a rag on her mouth, got in the car and fled. And Miriam also gave a description of said kidnapper. The police wanted to know how Nevea looked like, so Miriam gave them the keys to her apartment so the police could get a photo of Nevea. And she also gave them a description of what Nevea was wearing. Red sweatshirt with a white elephant and a pink and white princess shoes. At the apartment, the police made sure no one entered and talked to the neighbors and were told about Miriam and Angel's yelling. They also told the police they had seen Nevea on September 20th, 2007 in diapers and she showed no signs of bruising or injury. An Amber Alert was issued. Police officers and volunteers searched all over. They used search dogs. The police asked the public to look through their dumpsters. Inside the apartment, the police noticed a papal towel on the floor of the living room that had blood or some body fluid on it. The police learned Angel had gone to a neighbor's house and asked to use the telephone and was heard asking someone to come home. It was an emergency. Miriam was taken to be interviewed. When confronted with the information, she confessed. Nevea was dead. Angel removed the body and she had lied about the kidnapping. Miriam stated Angel called her to come home. When she got there, Nevea was thirsty and needed water. Nevea had fever and peed a little bit. She gave Nevea a drink and then Nevea collapsed on the floor. Miriam tried to revive Nevea. Nevea's eyes rolled back into her head and she stopped breathing. Miriam saw blood around Nevea's tongue and then affirmed Angel would never hurt Nevea, or would he? Miriam and Angel decided not to call an ambulance and Angel told Miriam to get rid of the body and claimed she was kidnapped. They put Nevea's body in a white trash bag. They put the head first and then they fold her because she was stiffed. Then they put the white trash bag inside a black trash bag and then placed it inside a blue sports duffel bag with yellow handles. Miriam and Angel then left the building and parted ways. Angel left with a duffel bag, which contained little Nevea's lifeless body. Miriam then identified Angel Ray Montoya by photo. When Angel was arrested, he had the duffel bag, but it was empty. Then Miriam decided something else had happened. Her new version of events stated she arrived home, walked into the room, Nevea was lying in bed already dressed and dead. Nevea had crusty blood around her mouth, lips and tongue. She was very pale. She placed Nevea on the floor and tried to revive her. Miriam stated Angel promised he hadn't done anything to Nevea. He had given her a bath because she had peed herself. Nevea got dressed, she ate and had a drink. After drinking, she couldn't breathe. She started panting and then collapsed. 
He put Nevea in bed and covered her with a blanket. The police asked the public assistance to find Nevea's body. Then on September 24, 2007, Nevea's body was found in the middle of a tree area in Lakewood Gilch Park. Her body wasn't buried. It was covered in debris. Nevea's pink and white princess shoes could be seen sticking out of the trash bag. There was a rip in the bag which you could see Nevea's face. Nevea's body was taken to the car coroner's office. Examination showed Nevaeh's little body was ravaged with injuries, which included injuries to the face, arms, chest, thighs, and lower legs. There was a clear sign of abuse, but they couldn't determine cause and manner of death. Angel and Miriam were arrested, but on October 2007, they were released pending the results of autopsy. A second examination was performed by a pathologist and it came to a conclusion there was extensive evidence of blunt trauma to the body of Nevea Gallegos. Injuries in Nevea's abdomen suggest she was either kicked or punched and her injuries were pre-mortem. Manner of death was ruled homicide and cause of death most likely asphyxiation. It would take 10 to 30 seconds to Nevea to lose consciousness and between 2 to 4 minutes to die. 2 to 4 minutes to Angel stop squeezing Nevea's neck. Late October 2007, Angel was arrested again because he had failed to register as a sex offender. On March 2008, Angel still hadn't registered in this mean jail, so he went on the run. The predator was on the run. Two years went by and still no justice for Nevea. And Janet Gallegos, Nevea's grandmother, was pissed. Angel and Miriam hadn't been arrested. Janet then reached out to an attorney who convened a grand jury. Then on April 2009, Angel and Miriam were indicted for the murder of Nevea Gallegos. Angel was charged with one count of first-degree murder and child abuse resulting in death. Miriam was charged with one count of child abuse resulting in death and being an accessory to a crime. Angel, who was already in custody, had bail denied and Miriam had an half a million dollar bond, which I'm sure Janet wouldn't make an effort to get it. Prosecutors wanted the death penalty. On October 30th, 2009, Angel and Miriam pled not guilty and it would take a while for the final curtain on these two despicable monsters. On January 6, 2011, Miriam was sentenced to 12 years in prison, which wasn't enough, and 5 years in parole for abuse resulting in death and the title of bad mother. On May 15, 2012, the predator Angel Montoya was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole.